Welcome to Dialogues for Change. Life is not a void to be filled. It is a plenitude to be discovered. Today, I would like to share with you some insights by William Tyler Olcott from his book Star Lore, Myths, Legends and Facts. I always like to turn my eyes to the stars at night and just marvel at them. So in his introduction, William Tyler Olcott gives us a little overview of the significance of stars in the different cultures of the world. In conclusion, it may be of interest to review briefly the conception of the firmament in vogue in ancient times among the different nations of the old world. The Persians are said to have considered 3,000 years ago that the whole heavens were divided up into four great districts, each watched over by one of the royal stars, Aldebaran, Antares, Regulus, and Formalaut. The Assyrians looked upon the stars as divinities endowed with beneficent or evil powers. Among the Chaldeans, the sky was regarded as a boat, shaped like a basket. The space below was the earth, which was flat and surrounded by water. The Egyptians worshipped Osiris and Isis as ancestors, and showed Plutarch their graves and the stars into which they had been metamorphosed. The ancient Peruvians thought that there was not a beast or bird on earth, whose shape or image did not shine in the sky. They considered the luminaries and stars guardian divinities and worshipped them. They also thought that the stars were the children of the sun and the moon. The Hebrews had a notion that the sun, moon and stars danced before Adam in paradise. The Bushmen, or early inhabitants of Africa, regarded the more conspicuous stars as men, lions, tortoises, etc. They believed that the sun, moon and stars were once mortals on earth, or even animals, or inorganic substances which happened to get translated to the skies. In New Zealand, heroes were thought to become stars of greater or less brightness according to the number of their victims slain in battle. The North American Indians believed that many of the stars were living creatures and knew Ursa Mayor as a bear, the same figure known in the Far East. The Danese islanders divided the heavens into constellations with definite traditions to account for the canoes, ducks and children that they see in the skies. In the South Pacific islands, dying men will announce their intention of becoming a star and even mention the particular part of the heavens where they are to be looked for. The Eskimos thought that some of the stars had been men and others different sorts of animals and fishes, which was also the mythical belief of the Greeks and the Romans. According to Slavonic mythology, the stars are regarded as living in habitual intercourse with men and their affairs. An ancient legend was that there were no stars till the giants of old, throwing stones at the sun, burst holes in the sky, and let the light of that orb shine through the holes which we call stars. And Anaximenes thought that the stars were fixed in the dome of heaven like nails. Thus we find, as someone has put it, that astronomy, like a golden thread, runs through history and binds together all tribes and peoples of the earth. And the girdle of stars we view nightly remains as the most ancient monument of the work of intelligent man, the oldest picture book of all. I hope you enjoyed these like very beautiful and inspiring perceptions of the stars above us. And I hope it will inspire you to sometimes turn your eyes upwards and marvel at these wonders. I hope that these inspirations on Sunday 
29th of January 2012 inspired you.